Because the Cutie Pie RP2040 is a very simple computer using the very simple CircuitPython operating system, it's not set up to be able to have multiple devices writing to the memory on its board. In normal operation, we edit the program through the laptop or whatever other computer we're using, and that information gets passed into the flash memory chip through the USB cable. The processor is able to load the code that we've stored in the memory chip, but it's not actually able to write anything because it's in the default read-only mode. If we switch to write mode, then the processor can load the program from the memory chip. It can also read data from a sensor and write it to the memory chip. However, there is no way for us to put new programs onto the chip or to modify the existing program. We are basically cut off from writing to the memory chip. We can still see what's going on through the serial console, but we don't actually have any control over what's in the chip. And we'll see in a little while how we can switch back and forth between read and write mode. Because of this situation, if we are in the default read-only mode and we try to write to the memory chip, this will cause an error to occur. So let's take a look at how we can handle that error. There is a set of instructions in Python called try accept, which allows us to try to handle errors. Normally, if an error is thrown by a script, the script simply terminates. However, we can set up error handling so that the script will continue to operate or will come to an end gracefully. We define a code block following a try statement to include the part of the code that we think might throw the error. Then, in the code block that follows the accept statement, we place the code that we intend to handle the error if it occurs. In this example, we are dividing by the number that the user types in. However, if the user types in a zero, that will throw an error and cause the script to crash. The error handling here is very simple. We just simply tell the user that division by zero is undefined and the program comes to an end. Here's a more complicated error trapping example that would be useful in our code. In this case, we are going to try to write some data from a temperature sensor into the onboard memory of the board. So the try code block is a part of the code where we are doing that writing to the memory. The part of the code that might throw the error is this first line here where we try to open the file. The accept statement has a little add-on here to capture the type of the error. And in our error handling code, we first check to see if the numeric code that was collected is a code 30, which is a read-only error. If the code was 30, then we inform the user that there was a read-only error. If it's something else, then we just simply print out the error code and the user is left to figure out what the problem is on their own.